Today we're going to be using a photo editor called Pixlr. Pixlr is a free program that's available in a cloud computing solution format, which means that it doesn't require you to install anything on your computer. All you need is an internet connection or web browser to be able to do some fantastic things with photos. It's very set, set out very similarly to Photoshop, but the big advantage is that it's free and once again it has that cloud computing aspect where you can just access it from anywhere. Pixlr has a couple of different options available. We have a photo editor here and then there's some vintage photo effects. The one we're going to be working with today is the actual photo editor. So we'll click on that and open that up. Today I want to work with some images that I plan to use in another program to create comics. And I've already gone to the internet and found a suitable image using Creative Commons which allows me to use the image without having any copyright infringement. So I can modify it, I could edit it, I could do all of that without getting into trouble. So I'm going to choose open images from my computer because I've already downloaded this image that I want to use. Now we need to navigate through the computer to find the file. The one I want is flower 11. I'm going to open that up. Now this flower is fantastic from the perspective that it's going to be easy to modify and manipulate but let's face it, it's pretty boring. It's got all this white space around it, which is going to cause problems when I want to bring it into my comic. It'll block things out. It's not transparent. It's not see-through. And of course, it doesn't have any color to it. I want My comic is going to be very colorful and bright, and I want my flower to match that concept. So I'm going to use some tools today to help us, one, get rid of all this extra space, and to color this photo in, this flower in, so it's nice. The two, those tools are going to be the magic wand tool for selecting things, the paint bucket tool, and of course the color palette down here as well. So let's get started. We'll choose the magic wand tool. I want you to click on the outside of the flower in that blank space, and you'll notice that these dashed lines sort of show up surrounding that area. It's actually just the white space it's selected. It's not focusing on the flower. If I want to focus on the flower, I need to right click and choose invert selection. You'll notice that the dotted lines have changed. Now they're surrounding the flower, which is exactly what I want. Next step, it, now that we've got the right part selected, I want to copy this and put it into a new canvas. You can, of course, use up the top here under Edit, there's Copy and Paste, or as I prefer to do the shortcut keys for Copy, it's Control c Next up, start with a new image, File, New Image, and a window pops up and it says Name Untitled. Well, that won't do. We want, I want to actually give this a name. So it's going to be New Flower. I want to make this a transparent image, so I need to choose that option, transparent meaning see-through. So I'm going to click transparent down here and then OK. I've got a new canvas, and these checker flags mean that it is indeed a transparent background. There isn't going to be any color to it. So next thing to do is to paste the flower in. Once again, you can use the edit option or the shortcut key for paste is Control v Our flower has appeared on the canvas. And now we want to set about adding some life to it, adding some color in. Once again, we can use the magic wand tool to select the various parts of the flower, any pieces that we want. Okay. But I want to add some color into these. So I'm going to come down to the color palette here. And to begin with, I want to set my petals to be a really bright color. I, Pink's going to work well for me, the color scheme that I've chosen today. And there are some different formats of colors that you can use up here. This one with the color wheel is probably the easiest one to work with for now. And you'll notice that it's black even though I've selected out here. That You just need to select in the center as well to get started. We want pinks, so I'm going to click on the pink area and then I'm just going to move this around until I get to the color. The, roundabout that I want. Right here you sh it shows you some variations of that color, some different shades. I want a nice bright color, so I'm going to pick that one there and then click OK. 
So now I've loaded a color into my palette. I can then go about selecting the flowers, the petals that I want to color. I can switch in between and do one at a time, or I can hold down my shift key while I'm clicking to go into multiple select mode. We know we're in multiple select mode because a little plus sign shows up next to the magic wand. Back to the paint bucket tool, and let's start filling in these flowers very quickly. Alright, that's looking lovely. Now I want to focus on the center of the flower, so I'm going to choose my magic wand tool. I'm going to select the center, come down to my color palette, choose a nice yellow. That one looks good, I'm quite happy with that. Paint bucket tool, fill it in. Alright. Now let's focus on the stem. I'm going to create a variegated look just to add some depth to the image. So I'm going to use two different shades of green. The stem, and then I'm also going to select some parts of the leaf to match that. Load my color, clicking on the color palette. Just click anywhere in the greens. I want a real traditional greeny green, so somewhat dark. Click that one and then paint bucket tool. So I'll fill in those areas. Once again, that magic wand. I'm going to choose the, the other parts of the flower. Oops, I forgot to hold down my shift key. There we go. Multiple select colors. And this is where this shade variation option is really quite nice because I want something that's similar but a bit lighter so I can perfect the color that I want there. So I've chosen my lighter green that I'm going to use, the paint bucket tool, and fill in the remaining areas. And that effect there is quite nice. I'm happy with that. We have a really nice looking flower now. It's all colored in. It's much better than the original. Um, we've gotten rid of all that white space. We've added some wonderful color to it that's going to match the theme of my comet. And now we need to go about the process of saving. So, let's go up to File again and Save. Now, we've got a couple options that come along here. You can directly export this to Facebook and uh, Flickr and the Pixlr library and all these different things. I just want to save it to my computer because I'm going to then open up my Comet Creation program and load it in from there. So I'm on the right setting there, my computer. Yep, name is New Flower, we're all good there. Problem is, take a look at the image. What happened to our transparent background? It's completely disappeared. It's time, panic station, shields up, red alert, oh no, I, we just done all that work and it's gone. You promised me we were going to get transparent background. Well, we are, but we just need to fix a little thing first. Now, in order to get a transparent background, you have to save your images in a format that supports transparency. JPEG is not one of them. So let's click on the little arrow here and we're going to see some options pop up. The two formats that support transparency are GIF and PNG. Pixlr allows us to use PNG, so I'm going to select that. And voila, magic transparent background is back. Beautiful, that's exactly what we want. So let's click OK. Now a little box comes up says, hey, where do you want to save this? So I'm going to save it right back to the desktop so I can show you the difference between the two different flowers. Let's hit save there and then minimize. All right, I'm looking at my desktop now and you'll notice that the original flower is there and the new flower. This one is boring with all the white and this one here you can actually see right straight through to the dark background that up on my desktop that I've set. So well done with that. This video is for your convenience, so you can just pause, rewind as many times as, as you want until you get it right. Additional tutorials are available on YouTube and the Pixlr website. Thank you very much for watching my tutorial and have a nice day.